six six rational exponents. This is all about dealing with expressions where the where the power is a rational exponent, the rational number, like four fifths. Now, actually, we kind of know how to do it already. We've been doing it in the past couple problems, lessons. We only have x ten, the cube root of x ten. We just wrote it as x ten divided by three. And that's how it works. If I give you something like a cube root of x, you could write that as x to the it's a power there, 1, power over root, 1 over 3. All right, so in general, if you have a k, k root, x to the m, you write it x to the m over k. All right, power over root, that's the key. Power over root, power over root. So that's the whole idea. That's how we write it. So all they want you to do here is rewrite it. In this case, they want you to rewrite it. So 10 to 1 fourth, remember this is the power, this is the root. So we're going to write it as the fourth root of 10 to the first, or just the fourth root of 10. Same thing here, power root, the fifth root of x to the third. We're going to rewrite this one. So 15, power is 1, so 1 over 3. The same thing here, 7 to the 1 fourth, x to the 6 fourths, and y to the 9 fourths. So you could reduce that if you want, but that's the general idea. It's how to rewrite it. Now let's evaluate some expressions. So this first one, remember what a negative power does. Negative power flips it. Now it doesn't flip the rational, it flips the base. So it's going to be, the, and again we're talking about the negative here, it's going to be 1 over negative 3, 1, 2, 5, so 1 fifth. Right, so negative power flips the base. Now from here you gotta figure out what three what's the fifth root of three one two five. Now again, it's not one of the ones I say to memorize, but think about logically. What what thing gives you a five at the end? Probably kinda of works. It's five. So one over negative five. Leave the answer there. Okay, now we get this one. Two fifty six to three eighths. So you can rewrite that as two fifty six eighth root of two fifty six to the third. But really the way you want to do this is like this. When it's like that, I want you to solve it. Why don't you do the root first? That's the that's the trick. Root first. So you get a problem like that where you have a you have a number to a fractional power and you want to simplify by hand. Do the root first. So we're gonna write it like this: the eighth root of two fifty six. Then we're gonna get to the third power. Eighth root of two fifty six. Again, not one I had to memorize, but you can think about it logically. Probably figure it out. It's two, and two to the third is eight. So again, we do the root first. So same thing here. Right, two thirds, so we're going to do the root first. So we're going to do the cube root of 125, and then we're going to square it. Cube root of 125 is just 5, 5 squared is 25. Same as the next one. We're going to, I'm going to do some doubt showing work. 4 to 3 halves, right? So we're going to square root first. Square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8. So it's 24 over 8, which is 3. So that's how you do those problems. You always do the root first. If I gave you something like 27 to the 2 thirds, you'd be like, okay, q root of 27. We're going to square that answer. q root of 27 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So that's how you do those. Now let's talk about simplifying expressions. So look at this first one here. Now I'm going to do an equivalent problem first. Let's say I gave you p squared times p cubed. Be like, oh, you just add the powers. P to the fifth. Two plus three. Same thing here. I don't care if it's rational exponent, you do the exact same thing. One fourth, oh, the same base, plus add the powers. Nine over four. So in this case I get P to the ten over four, also known as P to the five halves. This one, now I, I put this here on purpose. That's what the book does. The book is crazy. Sometimes. A lot of times the book's good, sometimes the book's kind of crazy. So what's going on here is this. I want you to go, okay, I don't want a negative exponent, so we flip it. So this will be 1 over r to the 4 fifths. Done. That's all I want you to do. The book sees this and goes, oh, you have to rationalize it. So they multiply both top and bottom by r to the 1 fifth. Right, because we want this to be 1. So that's what they do. I don't know if I put the screw root there. The book's crazy. That's all I want. And I actually prefer that, but whatever. That's what I want. Same thing here. 
I gotta say same base, I gotta add the powers. A to three fourths plus one half. Oh, you gotta add a common denominator. You need a you gotta add fractions. And then when you add fractions, all you do is find a common denominator. In this case it's four, so a to three fourths plus multiply by two two, two fourths, and you get a to the five fourths. Right? Just adding fractions like normal, good old days. Here, again, just pretend it's like this. How do we do that? We subtract the powers. So same thing here. Top over bottom, subtract the powers. X to three fifths. And that's how you simplify rational expressions. Keep in mind the things we talked before, right? We generally want no ne if I say you simplify, I want no negative expressions. Uh, no expressions that have, uh, make sure it's not a complex fraction. Okay, no, I'm fine with complex fractions. No, it has no exponents that are not positive integers in the denominator. Yeah, that's fine. Next up, any remainder of those. Yeah, that's true. So this, I don't care about complex. We like complex fractions. What are you talking about? Okay, so a couple things here. This one, I want to point out that you cannot just divide them. Right, these are different base. These are different roots. Like if we rewrote it, it'd be thirty-two to the one fourth over two to the one third. So you can't simplify because the powers are different. So with here, everybody can't do much. What you can do, we're gonna get into this later, is you could rewrite thirty-two. This is a little preview to next chapter. We're gonna do this a lot more next chapter than we are gonna do this chapter. We're not really gonna focus on this this chapter. What you could do is you could rewrite this at the same base. Thirty-two, the same thing as saying two to the fifth. So you have 2 to the 5th to the 1 4th over 2 to the 1 3rd. And if we have that, that's the same thing as saying 2 to the 5 fourths over 2 to the 1 3rd. So again, what I looked at it do, I was like, wait, I can't do anything here. They're the same, different powers, they're not the same base, I can't do anything. But what I did is we wrote 32, I was like, wait, I can rewrite that. 32 is the same thing as saying 2 to the 5th power. So I switched 32 with 2 to the 5th, and I simplified it a bit. Again, we're going to do this a lot more next chapter. It's like a little preview. We're going to do this a lot more next chapter. And now you go, wait, these are the same base. Remember how we do the same base? Same thing we did up here. When you have the same base, you just subtract the powers. So my next step here would be 2 to the 5 fourths minus 1 third. Then all you have to do is find the common denominator. So it'll be like 3 and 3 and 4 and 4. Right, subtract the powers. So you get 5 over 12. 3 and 3, so 15 over 12 minus 4 and 4 common denominator 4 over 12 so you get 2 to 11 twelfths that's how the problem is done again we're going to do this way more next chapter and we're not going to do this chapter this little preview but that's going to be we're going to do a lot next chapter just get the rewrite things so, so the bases match that's a big part of next chapter anyway this next one let's do the same thing here let's rewrite the base here so again this all this is like this little preview to next chapter get you going so 16, can I write that a different way? Any powers that go 16? There's a couple. I can write that as 4 squared or 2 cubed. Let's go with the 2 cubed. 2 to the 4, sorry. Let's go with the 2 to the 4th one. So we're going to have the cube root of 2 to the 4th, x to the 4th. Now the way we do this, you divide the powers, right? So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Wait, let's write right here. 4 divided by th 3, sorry, is 1 remainder 1. So I have 1, 2 on the outside. 1, 2 on the inside. Same thing with x to the 4th. 4 divided by 3 is 1 remainder 1. So 1x on the outside, 1x on the inside. That's what they want for that one. Again, all this is kind of a preview to the next chapter. Let's rewrite this one. 9, the same thing as 3 squared, g squared, all to the 1 4th power, or 4th root. So we're going to multiply it out. We get 3 to the 1 half, g to the 1 half. Or if we want, square root of g, 3 and g. Either way is fine. This one's a little different. Because notice how they have the same power, the same root. So I can actually divide these. I could get fifth root of 64 over 4, which is 16. Like, okay, done. But again, all this is a preview to the next chapter. So once you get, this is all about practice. How can I rewrite 16? Write that as 2 to the 4th. So the same thing as saying 5th root of 2 to the 4th. Same thing as saying 2 to the 4 fifths. Again, you won't get any this on the quiz or test, but 
it, you can see this a lot next chapter. A lot next chapter. So there's a little, pre little preview for next chapter. Anyway, let's move on. Nah, not that one. Last one. A population of 100 deer is reintroduced into a wildlife preserve. Suppose the population does extremely well and the deer population doubles in two years. Then the number of deer, D, after T years is given by its formula. So again, we have a formula. Make sure you know what each thing stands for. T is years. D is the number of deer. So we have that formula. How many deer will be there? Will there be after four and a half years? So that's our T. So all I gotta do for A is plug that in. So I can plug 1.5, 4.5 over 2. Again, it's an application problem, so feel free to use your calculator. I want you to use it. I'm gonna do that by hand. So it's gonna be 100 times 2 to the 4.5 divided by 2. So about, why did I have that 100? Okay. So let's do this. I didn't realize they had answer divided by in front. Delete, delete. Okay, there we go. 475. Actually, I think 476 would be round. About 104 cent, 476 deer. B, make a table that charts the population of deer every year for the next five years. So we can do it for every year. We can plug in five. I'm not going to do that. Make a graph using the table. So again, I'm going to just use a calculator. Let's graph in our calculator. 100 times 2 to the... Now remember, we don't have T, we just use X. I could graph it. If they want a table, I could look at my table too. So every five years, let's go down here. So zero five zero five six. Actually, let's show you this. You could change the table values if you want. If you go to window, sorry, if you go to table set right here, it lets you go. Where do you want to start? We want to start at zero. What do you want to count by? So I'm going to ask by ones. I'm going to go to five. Now if I go net back to my table. It's counting by fives. So you see how huge it gets. I'm going to go back and put it back to one. That's a standard, industry standard. But this will show you. You can change your table values. Anyway, let's go to my graph. Let's make it standard. So zoom standard. And I can barely see it. I might want to zoom fit this one. There you go. Zoom fit. See if that gives me a better picture. There we go. It's basically saying it's going like that. And you can already see it at the very beginning because remember it crosses at 100. That was the initial, the initial amount of deer was 100. That's why we can really see it. So this is C. We did be online. Using your table in the graph, decide whether this is a reasonable trend over the long term. Uh, so again, next time they say this over the long term, most times it'll be no and no, right? Eventually it'll be, it'll be the planet of the deer. It'll be so many deer. So yeah, it's not a reasonable event. So I can continue. At some point it has to stabilize. So no, cities will be overrun by deer. There's not, it wouldn't be enough deer for the planets. Anyway, that's the lesson.